Welcome back to Dishonored the Knife of Dunwall. Let's go figure out what Thalia knows. One more body should matter, right? Thalia should be waiting in Trevor's close. It's an alley just past the Wall of Light. You'll know it by three whitewashed skulls. Look at the care that's gone into writing that font. That is some good graffiti or whatever you call it. It's the way we do things in the legal district. Stop trouble before it starts. The way the barrister likes it. I hear General Turnbull is coming to inspect going to make the whole city run like this. It's about time. I was just thinking of going up there, but then the electrical noise made me think, hmm. Between that and getting run over, not such a good place to hang out. <laughs> that rune. As requested. Three runes. Okay. Next level of Void Gaze. See in the dark and see useful objects and security systems through walls. See living beings through walls as well, including their fields of vision. Hmm. Definitely don't want to upgrade Summon Assassin. I don't really care about that ability. God, I almost want to just save up for Blink level 2, because Blink is such an integral, important thing. Can improve health. Overall movement speed is increased. Our movement speed is very slow, to be honest. I might want that. It doesn't really allow me to do anything new, though. It's just more of a quality of life kind of thing. But I think I want that. Be 
seen anybody with signs of the sickness? Another night, another patrol with you. Have been incarcerated. Citizens should remain vigilant. Report. Residual assets of the Rothwild estate are now sole property of the Lord Regent. I think I want to just avoid these guards, if I can. I'm going to head up there on the tracks as soon as the next thing goes by. Or maybe not. I thought that shocking noise meant something was about to go by. I guess it's just to indicate that it's always electrically charged, maybe? been killed by enemies of the state while heroically attempting to prevent an act of sabotage. Be vigilant and report suspicious persons to the city watch. <laughs> they really don't care about their fallen comrade, do they? Nom nom. Look at him go. So tenacious. This movement speed increase is nice, because I try to spend as much time crouched, sneaking as possible, rather than sprinting. And it was just ungodly slow. Oh, the tree doesn't have collision, does it? Hmm. What you mean? Who's paid those clubs? You're threatening the wrong person. <coughs> if I'm you, I'm strong enough to do Start cutting. I'm telling you now, walk away. Go home. You're making a mistake. Oh, yeah? How so? I'm here to meet a man named Dowd. <laughs> the great assassin? Oh, I'm really quaking my boots now. Left a proper stain in my britches. Tell me, why would he meet with a lady like you? Because I'm hiring him to kill a person. And I'm paying him a lot of money. Money you will never see because you'll soon be gasping for breath on the end of Dowd's blade. Shut up. That ain't true. Isn't it? Your fear is obvious. You reek of it. Among other things. I'll tell you what I think. I think you and Captain What's-His-Face are there. <laughs> I told you he was coming. Get him, boys! You it's asleep. just a matter Get of time, up. buddy. Where are you? Wasn't expecting them to have backup. If he comes back, I'll earn another promotion. Hey, we're gonna find your sorry. About to get shanked. Help me look for him. Where'd you run off to? Run and hide, you coward. I know you're here.
this character is busy? Oh. Look at you, the master assassin. So you want to know about Delilah? Well, my uncle is bewitched by her, so we won't tell you anything. I require only two things. Get rid of my uncle, and bring me his last will and testament. In exchange, I'll tell you what you want to know about Delilah Copperspoon. And I'll pay you cold hard coin for your trouble. Come back to me when it's done. Let's meet at the docks when you return. Sounds fair. Too many people over there. I want in there, though. How do I get that bone charm? So close. Oh, this opens. Choke dust. We've already gotten that before. Yeah. The Redshore Chamber of Commerce. Excerpt from a book covering the various districts across Dunwall and their histories. Once the financial heart of the Empire, the Redshore Financial District was a hive of trade activity. No district employed more barristers, accountants, or indeed more security and no part of Dunwall saw a greater flow of coin. When the flood barriers broke and the waters rolled in, the looting that followed was accompanied by an epic period of chaos and butchery. Those who could withdraw and move their assets did what they could. Others, with their wealth tied up in grand mansions and artwork, lost it all. While well, the last of the high society set had withdrawn and the lights went dark, Rutshore was a gloomy, crumbling shell of what it had been, inhabited by thieves, wild dogs, and rats. Once great palaces of commerce sat empty and haunted, or came to house killers and mercenaries, as well as anyone else looking to hide from the city watch. In mere months, the flooded district was settled upon as the most proper name for the place. Excerpt from a travel chronicle by Anton Sokolov. The men I set out with are good sailors. No doubt half of them have cut their teeth on the rascally pirate ships spawned in the Circonian archipelago. Or they were, I should say. Half of them died before we sighted the broken red cliffs welcoming those who would visit the far continent, as it is called. Sickness, infighting, poisoned by... A school, or would one say a flock of small fish that fly over the waves like birds, landing in the hundreds across the deck, pricking any they touched with toxic quills. Two thrown overboard by gusting demon winds. The quiet Tivian navigator simply dead in his bunk, wrapped in his white furs, eyes wide with terror. Few have crossed the ocean, and the distance to Pondicia is greater than most would imagine. More died climbing the cliffs, and now with but a handful... I stand looking across the greatest expanse of land that exists. My allies are frightened, for this is beyond them, and now their captain is dead too, 
stung by something that resembled a prairie mole, but reacted with great apoplectic, I'm not sure what that means, outrage when handled. So it falls on me to lead them. Page torn from an old manuscript written in a scrawling hand. Cruel Nancy, take the world from her greedy hands. Lay it before the black-eyed groom. Cut sharp, cut deep, red drip, drop. Last and least, burn it in the hearth of a lawless man. Do this for me, dearie, and I'll give you a birthday treat. Granny. Excerpt from the Hatters, well-dressed kings of the Low Street. Those are the people we just fought. Well, we didn't really fight them, we just choked them out. <laughs> the following is reconstructed from a discourse with a street person I encountered in a disreputable whiskey house while incognito. The Hatters used to run all the rackets around Dunwall. Whiskey, weapons, hound fights. Whatever the game, the Hatters had a big stake in it. Then the plague came and tore the whole damn city apart. All that chaos led to new bosses cropping up. Most were shit heels that didn't last a week, but there were some hard cases like Lizzie Stride, Jim Dundermore, and Black Sally, and Slackjaw. His Bottle Street boys took the whiskey distillery from the Hatters and started pumping out bootleg elixir. That kicked off a gang war that made all the allies, uh, alleys red with blood. Problem was we, I mean the Hatters, were getting it from all sides. The dead eels were pinching all the river smuggling deals. The butchers were driving us out of Slaughterhouse Row. We were bleeding from a dozen different cuts, losing some of our best guys. So we pulled back. Just for a while. As always, anyone who counts the Hatters out is two trumps short of a full deck of Nancy. The boss is a real devious son of a bitch. Been around since before the Caldwins. But I ain't talking about him. Hatters don't talk about the geezer. Even ex-Hatters. Note, despite my lavish bribery, the man refused to speak further on the subject. In fact, it became obvious I had aroused his suspicions, uh, suspicions by that point, so I was forced to make my escape from the establishment. Scholar Joella Burgess, Academy of Natural Philosophy. I don't know when we got this. Water of life. Drinking from fountain recharges a small amount of health. Sure. Oh wait, that's what we just picked up, isn't it? I always confuse the bone charms and the runes. just overhear something? The Hatters may have the key to the legal district. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Creepy as hell. Why is it 
bleeding or whatever that liquid is. Someday I'll be the one who can afford this stuff. Missing key note. Cap. Looks like the Hatter has broken and took the key to the legal district. I'm gonna knock some heads. Excerpt from a manual on new City Watch procedures. Commissioned by the Lord Regent in the face of the growing plague crisis, the dead counter is a position that will only be given to officers, usually of junior or middle grades. In most matters of edict or curfew enforcement, these officers will defer to the acting officer on duty. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those with late-stage plague symptoms, called weepers in common parlance. Starting in the month of rain, interested officers may apply for the test and, if accepted, for the two-week training tour. Pay will be administered in coin and rations of elixir at one and a half normal pay grade. Excerpt from a City Watch River Patrol report. William Cotter, captain of the merchant vessel, the Windover, reports that on the 23rd day of the month of Nets, his vessel was waylaid by the Dead Eels, a gang of notorious criminals known for acts of river piracy, wanton destruction, and smuggling. Prior to the blockade, the Windover was bound for Dunwall bearing medicinal supplies, food, and material goods from the city of Driscoll in northeast Gristol. Driscoll? Gristol? <laughs> the captain claims that at quarter past midnight he heard the aft bell sound the alarm. As the weather was foggy, the captain's first thought was that of an imminent collision. But when he exited his quarters, he found a grisly scene. Half his men already gutted on the boards, and the rest locked in a vicious struggle. Captain Cotter surmised that dead eels had swum up to the boat and scaled the side of the ship with climbing hooks. But how they'd caught the ship or where they'd come from, he couldn't fathom. Realizing he had no chance, and knowing that the dead eels took no prisoners, Captain Cotter immediately hid in a hollow of a false bottom shipping crate. I asked the captain why a legitimate trader would need secret compartments, but he couldn't remember where he'd gotten it and assured me that it had been empty. Safely hidden from view while his crew was butchered, Cotter also witnessed the appearance of the dead eels' leader, a violent woman by the name of Lizzie Stride. He reports that her teeth were filed to sharp points, and that she went about the deck of the ship barefoot. Cotter, clearly out of his mind with fear, even claims her feet were webbed. Adding to my suspicion, I'll note that Captain Cotter still had the stench of brandy on his breath when the river patrol fished him out of the water. Lizzie Stride proceeded to question the first mate for several minutes before biting the man's tongue out of his own mouth and tossing him into the river. Eventually, the dead eels discovered the captain's stash of King Street brandy, Captain Cotter used this discovery and the ensuing celebration as an opportunity to slip overboard undetected. I'm recommending a detailed patrol of the area in case the dead eels left any clues. They sank the ship, but some useful wreckage might be recovered. Also, I recommend that William Cotter's status as captain and his trading license be stripped at once. Further, the man should be investigated for charges of smuggling along the Renhaven. a little bit with each drink. Hatter gang hat. Can we use that as a disguise or something?
What was that? Probably came from the floor below us. Gotta be here somewhere. Got you now. Someone help He's me cunning. Out. We'll beat again. Shout it to see him. For the watch. You Damn think it, you're being quiet? I know you're somewhere. Here you are. Assassin, out. help! Watch him. Take Jesus Christ. This is not very elegant. For the man who kills this one. Oh, shit. You're gonna bleed, damn you. Dear God. Well, now would be a good time to maybe go to the Hatters, wait for them to cool down back here. <laughs> Nobody heard that. Oh! 
Okay, maybe you keep heard something. Or maybe you're hey, losing. wake up. Hear me? Where are you? Wake up, damn Where'd it! You run off to? Ooh, good thing I didn't hit that. More trank darts. Come on, spread out. Someone's about to get shit. Where are you? Heaven's dice. Where'd you run? Come back out or what? You look like garbage. Can't hold your drink. I know you're here. Why well, don't we just pick up the thing and go then? To do list: loot that one place. Get even with Craxton. Uh, Chauncey took that key we nicked from the watch as he's trying to loot some lawyer types' houses. He went cat burgling around the balconies and ain't come down yet. Better see what happened and get that key back. And brush my teeth this week. <laughs> Not this day, this week. Alright, around the balconies. Hasn't come down yet. There, the big door. Where are you? Lost him. I've been in here, right? Is that? Come on, let's get this guy. <laughs> Your adrenaline takes slightly longer to cool down. It sounds like a combat kind of thing that I probably wouldn't want. None of this would have gotten so bad if that damn fool Corvo hadn't killed the Empress. to see reason.
I love how far up you can go. So much verticality. I read in a review that Dishonored 2 has even more verticality, and I'm trying to imagine what that would look like compared to this, because this feels like it has a lot to me. Collision? Uh, no, it doesn't. This area is under lockdown. Any unauthorized individuals are to be considered suspicious and confronted. I think I just got ahead to the ground. Damn, you can swim? I just assumed water is instant death. Tricky. sleep darts. Scout up ahead. Try to find out where Timsh is. There's an equipment stash on the rooftops nearby. We've been anticipating doing a hit on Timsh for some time. I know. Half the city wants him dead. We'll earn some gold on this one. I'll meet you up ahead. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to explore the legal district. <laughs>